Hi, this is Abby from Witchcraft and Criminal History. Hopefully you're doing well. With Today we're doing a case which is pivotal for criminal history. And if you have been in university, like no matter what um, subject you're doing, whether you're doing, you know, like me, psychology, criminology, law, the arts, science, medicine, you have to learn the history. you got to learn history. And I'm actually very surprised that this case is very rarely known. And this is a very important case for legal history. As this case is the first case of somebody being successfully um, extradited for murder. Prior to 1910, if you committed murder outside of a country, I mean, if you murdered somebody in your country, you could easily start off a new life, even with the same identity, in another country and they couldn't touch you. Like, if you killed somebody in the US, and even if um, the, the American and the US um, authorities knew about you, you could literally... Go over to the UK, for example, send a, a letter even with a postcard with your photo smacked on it and say, hi, I know you want me for murder, come and get me, but, but guess what, you can't. You could easily do that. Don't ask me why, but you could easily do that and they couldn't extradite you. You're scot-free. But that all changed in 1910. In nineteen in nineteen ten, the first person got extradited for murder. It was actually two people, one of which got acquitted, and this was Doctor Hawley Harvey Crippen and Ethel Laneve. Doctor Crippen was born in the United States. He was born in the United States, and he was, and he, he attended medical school at the University of Michigan Homeopathic Medical School, and graduated in eighteen eighty four. He met his wife in New York when he was practicing there in eighteen ninety four, and his wife's name was Cora Crippen, or Cora Crippen. She was all her stage name was was Bell Elmore. So Bell Elmore and Cora Crippen are the same person. Bell Elmore or Cora Crippen, she was um you could say an actress. She was an actress. She performed on stage and she had dreams of being an opera singer. However, apparently she didn't have the talent for it or the vocal cords for it. So to further his wife's career, they actually migrated over to, over to, to the UK. However, when they migrated to the UK, Dr. Crippen's um, medical qualifications wasn't valid. Like even though he had a certificate, a doctorate from um, the University of Michigan, it wasn't worth anything. So he went to homeopathic uh, medicine, so he was pretty much one side short of um, being a quack doctor. But while he was over there, the, there was a strain on a relationship. And at, at, his, at his job, he fell in love with a typist. Her name was Ethel and Eve. So yeah, the old love triangle and somebody falling in love with their secretary pretty much. And, um, but Dr. Crippen kept his relationship with Ethel and Eve a secret. However, on the 31st of January 1910, Dr. Crippen and his wife, Cora Crippen, invited some people over for dinner. These people 
this was the last time Ethel's and this is the last time Cora Crippen's family not family, sorry, Cora Crippen's friends ever saw her alive. Supposedly. Because she was not seen again after the thirty first of January nineteen ten. She went she disappeared and there was mysterious letters apparently originating from the US stating that a member of Cora's family was taken ill, possibly from consumption, and consumption is tuberculosis. And she had to go up quickly back to the US to attend to her family, leaving Harvey Crippen, you know, at home. But, you know, after a while, they were finding it more and more difficult. That the friends were getting very concerned and they were pushing Dr. Crippen, you know, to get more information, you know, on the whereabouts of Cora Crippen. And eventually he said that she, contra she contracted um, consumption just outside of New York. And she, unfortunately, she went out to somewhere where there was high heels so she could help her breathing, which was a very common method back in the, those days for to, to treat um, tuberculosis. But he also said later on that she died due to consumption. But when these people, you know, inquired with their family, with their friends over in the US in regards to Cora Crippen to see whether they could get um, details, you know, details of her funeral. There was no such details. And they actually contacted the NYPD to see whether they can find anything out from, from, from stateside. And eventually this also got the attention of Walter Dew. Inspector Walter Dew was working for Scotland Yard. So for them to get involved is you know, quite interesting. But Walter Dew, we'll get a little bit more information about Walter Dew because he's very pivotal for this case. Um, Walter Dew... You know, Walter Dew went to Dr. Crippen and questioned about it, about him. But when he went to the door, he was surprised to see Ethel and Eve there. And she was living in their house wearing, wearing Cora Crippen's furs, her clothing, her jewellery, everything. And she was even walking around, um, walking around their home and around the surrounding area. In his in his um supposedly late wife's clothing, which definitely, you know, is so it does set up a bunch of alarm bells. So they went to check on him, and he was telling them about things. But when they confronted him, that um the NYPD and the police stateside couldn't find any information about him, about the whereabouts of Cora Crippen. He turned around and said that she, that he felt like a fool and that she left him. And the police pretty much, you know, under protocol, pretty much told him, you know, we're going to try and investigate this. You know, don't go anywhere. What do... um? What do um, Dr. Crippen do? Well, as soon as the police got out of there, he arranged for one of his secretaries to go out and get um, some boys' clothes, packed up his stuff, and fled to France. They lived in France for a little while until they, would, until they decided that they didn't feel safe in France where they migrated, where they were planning to migrate to the United States via Canada. To Quebec, Canada. So they got onto a boat. 
But to say the least, the boat they caught wasn't the fastest boat to get out of France. And also another thing, another thing was that this this um, boat, the Montrose, had only about four passengers, which were in um, which is it were in second class, which is um, business class. And one of them sounded had a very high pitch for a boy. And it was obviously a girl. And the other one was having a bit of a, a bit of a beard. Of course, the captain knew something was up and notified notified Scotland Yard. When I see the video is getting a little bit long, this is um part one. I do encourage you guys to continue watching this video. In part two, if you enjoyed this video, please like up, subscribe. Have a great day and blessed be.